Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Genus Power Infrastructures Limited Q1 FY23 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kaila Shagarwal, Vice Chairman of GNS Power Infrastructures Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I sincerely apologize for the delay today happened because of some technical issues and all. A very warm welcome to the Q1 FY23 earning call of Genus Park. With me, I have Mr. Jitendra Agarwal, Joint Managing Director of the company and SGA or Investors Relation Advisor. We have recorded a sales of 187 crore for Q1 FY23, up by 43% as compared to Rs. 130 crores in last financial year. Revenue growth for Q1 FY23 was expected on account of reduced capacity utilization due to disruptions in supply of semiconductors and other essential electronic items. However, we expect that the normalcy in supply chain to be restored within next three months and anticipate a sharp revenue rebound in the second uh, quarter of this financial year. For Q1 FY23, EBITDA stood at Rs. 14 crore as compared to Rs. 5 crore in last financial year, a jump of 183%. Sequentially, higher prices for raw material and a lack of operating leverage as a result of lower capacity utilization continued to hamper operating margins. In April 2022, we received a letter of award for appointment of advanced metering infrastructure service provider, including design of AIMI system with supply, installation, and commissioning of about 10 lakh smart prepaid meters, DT meters level, energy accounting, and FMS of these smart meters from a state utility. The total order worth rupees 828.57 crores net of taxes is the single largest order finalized by any state utility in India for AMISP. As on 30th June 2022, our order books stood at 1855 crores net of taxes. Just few days back on 30th July 2022, Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the Power Ministry's flagship revamp distribution scheme, sector scheme, which aims to improve the operation efficiencies and financial sustainability of stress power distribution companies, DISCOMs and state power departments. DISCOM suffer massive losses due to power theft, at and losses, meter tempering and inaccurate RDSS as a life uh, Excuse me, Mr. Agarwal, this is the operator. We are not able to hear you clearly, sir. Uh, so better we take question and answers then. Uh, uh, let uh, let me uh, let me open the floor for the question and then uh, I think uh, because JK is somewhere else and he will be answering more of the questions. So uh, let us try to uh, do that then. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will now begin the question and answer session. Participants who wish to ask a question may kindly press star 1 on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles.
The first question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from Dam Capital. Kindly proceed. Hi, good evening, sir. And so my first question is on the uh, on the order inflow outlook uh, for the for the balance of the year. Of course, the government it looks like the RDSS system is in place, uh, and and a host of other UPMP bids were in were in pipeline. Can you please update us with the status of the bids? That's the first question. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, can you hear us, sir? Participants, kindly be online while we reconnect the line for Mr. Agarwal. Hello, hello, hello. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, yes, sir, kindly now? proceed. Yeah, I am sorry, I was on mute. So, uh, uh, so I will distribute the order uh, inflow in three models. So the live tender, uh, which are already being quoted. So in its part meters, uh, there are uh, two types of live tenders are currently available. One is on the OPEX model and one is on the CAPEX model. On the CAPEX, there's a live tender of around 280 crores that are already been big participation. And on OPEX model, there's a live tender of 774 crores which are already been participated. And there are a lot of conventional media tenders also which are live, which are already been participated. That is to the tune of 1,889 crores, almost 1,100 crores. So these are conventional media. So in total, as on date, there are tenders worth 2,000 plus crores are already participated, which we call them live tenders. And tenders which are already out and to be participated. So in the topex model, there is a, uh, Tender of uh, uh, 10 million meters on uh, power grid, uh, which is one crore meters. So uh, a bit of almost uh, 7,600 crore, which is uh, to be participated. Then there are OPEX model tenders of uh, 75 lakh meters in the market, which is uh, uh, the, uh, the value is around uh, 7,000 crores is the, uh, the estimated value. Again, uh, these are to be quoted. These are on the OPEX model. And then there are smart meter CAPEX model tenders, is primarily from EESN and some of the utilities. So they are already, they are to be participated again. So worth uh, 850 crore rupees. And there are some conventional meters tenders to be participated, which are worth 300 crores. So in total, there are uh, bids of almost uh, 20,000 crores which are open in the market to be participated. Almost, uh, I would say, uh, 18 to 20 crore crores to be participated or already participated. So participated is around 2,000 crores as of now. In tenders, which will be participated in next three to five months, will be to the tune of 15 to 17,000 crores. So this is the current line. And just to add on to this, almost every state electricity board RDSO scheme has been approved. Officially, as on date, it is 7,735 crores of uh, ideas and schemes for different DPRs of across uh, all the state electricity boards has been approved by government of India. This is the uh, official figure, which is in the REC website as well. Sir, of course, there is the uh, the order. The there is a large order which is expected over the next. In the sense, the opportunity is very huge. But how much you are willing to take? You know how much is your appetite? And and the real question is that given the order book right now, what kind of top line is possible in the in FY23? So FY23, because uh, our first quarter and we don't see 100 percent normalcy happening in the so H1. Not always uh, we have given the guidelines that H1 is going to be a little bit under. Uh, tougher side because of the availability of components. That has been the major reason. So FY23, we expect the top line of, uh, and here we have given the guidelines, guidelines of around uh, 100 crores. But I see that going down for the FY23. So I can, currently, I can give you the guidance of 1000 to 1050 crores. But S2 will be the rebound uh, for the uh, FY23. 
in order booking wise in fy23 lot of most of these candidates will be decided in order book position will be very very healthy for the fy24 by the end of fy23 okay so thank you sir all best of luck thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nikhil jain from galaxy international can you proceed yeah thank you for the opportunity um, just a couple of questions actually uh, so first is related to the the current order execution in this particular quarter so is a is a is a is a muted top line basically only because of the semiconductor issues and the, the electronic chip parts or is there is there any other reason related to the government or related to capacity or or any other issue so that is uh, point uh, one I would say not only the major, but the only reason is uh, the, the semiconductor issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Because, uh, so, still, it has not become absolutely uh, normal the way we would have uh, to, to be. We would have liked it to be. So, what we hear from the automobile companies and other, let's say, electronic manufacturing companies is that the shortage is easing and they are now able to ramp up their production. So. Uh, I'll just take two minutes of the audience because that is of interest of everyone. And, and all these electronic components are primarily three takers. First is the consumer electronics, second is the uh, automotive industry, and the third is the industrial. We come in the industrial sector. Definitely, the consumer electronics uptake has slowed down significantly due to recession and export worry. Our requirement has also come down immediately. That is the reason uh, it has moved out to automotive to a very large extent. The automotive industry will get back to normal days. I personally feel in next uh, uh, two to three months there will happen. Hello. Hello. Excuse me, sir. This is your operator, Mr. Agarwal. The line for Mr. Agarwal is just disconnected. We'll just connect him back. Kindly be online. Yes, Mr. Agarwal, you may proceed. Yeah. So, uh, I was at the electronic components uh, thing. The industrial electronics is the last of the lot when it comes to electronic components supplies. So, we also envisage because uh, consumer electronics requirement has gone down significantly. Automobile is, is almost normalized, or will be normalized in the next two to three months. And, then, and there will be significant improvement in the same time. For the availability of components for industrial electronics also. That is the reason I confidently feel that uh, H2 will be uh, much better for companies like us in comparison to H1. Yeah. So, related question. So, if there would not have been any semiconductor issue and with an order book of let's say around 1800 odd crores that we had in the last quarter, um, so how much uh, would have been put, uh, potentially be able to be? Done in this quarter, let's say hypothetically, right? So it's big, assuming that there is no. So we would have done uh, at least uh, 75 uh, top line more if there would not have been any issues of the same. <laughs> okay. And so one, uh, the second question is related to uh, the guidance. So, so I just uh, heard that uh, you are revising the guidance for the year to around 1,050 odd crores from let's say 1,300 to 1,400. That we had at the start of the last quarter. 
right so what has actually changed because at that time also we were saying that uh, quarter 1 is not expected to be good the things will only improve from quarter 3 so what why why are we actually changing the guidance from 1400 odd crores to 1000 odd crores so can you just uh, please share your thoughts we always give the guidance of 1200 to 1250 we never give the guidance of 1500 Some gap in here in numbers, and I was not expecting quarter one and two to be that uh, quarter one to be that uh, difficult. We were quite confident that yes, things will ease out and we'll be in a uh, we'll be doing uh, much better than what we have done in quarter one. That is the reason I want to uh, uh, change the guidance for the whole financial year. Our target will always be to do better than what we are doing. That goes without saying. But yes, uh, that's, the, that's the only reason we want to look at the budget. Yeah, because it is becoming like say every every quarter it kinds of moves forward actually, right? So we expect that quarter two will be better, then quarter three will be better, and now we are saying for the full year the the requirements will be not so good actually, right? So the things will move to FY twenty four. Yeah. Quarter two okay, things will definitely get better, but since uh, Quarter one uh, much below the expectation. So that is the reason uh, we want to reduce the Okay, okay. And so just uh, one last question. So uh, with this, uh, uh, let's say a uh, new guidance on the for the year, would we be able to achieve our optimum margins? Uh, let's say when we exit uh, FI twenty three, let's say in quarter four of FI twenty three. uh the optimum margin of let's say around 16 17% that we have said earlier we should be yes we we also expect our, uh, our margin will be uh, will improve to the normal levels by the end of this uh, financial year but we also expect it to okay okay fair enough sir thank you and i will join back in the queue thank you thank you thank you participants if you wish to ask a question kindly press star 1 The next question is from the line of Priyanka Singh from Asidhan Securities. Kindly proceed. Yeah. Good evening, sir. I have a couple of questions. Uh, firstly, uh, can you explain in detail that out of our total order book of eighteen fifty-five crores, how much has been received by us on the system integrator for the supply of smart meter? How much capital expenditure will the will the company uh, you know be uh, doing uh, for the state? And what is the repayment schedule for state electricity boards? What is the uh, service fee component? So I'm uh, got little uh, I'm not very clear with your question. Do you want to know how much data is being supplied to the system integrator? Correct. So just, system uh, is currently, yeah. Hello. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, how much uh, out of the total order book we have received uh, as a system integrator for supply of smart meters? So as a system integrator, we are doing only one project, which is uh, on the OPEX, TOTEX basis, which is the Bihar one, where we have to supply. Uh, um, 1 million meters. Okay. So that is uh, 828 crore uh, order what we have. And otherwise, what we have to supply, uh, there are orders worth 500 crore. These are purely supply orders of uh, energy meters. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, secondly, And we have around uh, 200 crore plus orders of. Uh, Facility management services, which is like uh, AMC. Uh, I lost you in between. Hello. Hello. Hey, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, I I also want to understand what is the repayment schedule for state electricity boards, and what is the service fee component. What is fee component? Service fee component. So service. So as I said, that out of this, I'll just give you the breakup out of this like eighteen hundred crores order. 
फाइव हंड्रेड करोड विज प्योरली सप्लाई ऑर्डर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक एनर्जी मीटर विच वी विल बी सप्लाई टू डिफरेंट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बोर्ड सिस्टम इंटीग्रेटर एक्सेप्ट and then there are uh, in this order book we have uh, almost 200 plus crores of fms orders where we have already installed the meters where we will be doing the servicing of this meters the way we are going to currently we are doing a project in rajasthan tamil nadu other projects in uh, utranchal jharkhand so all these projects we have service orders where meters have been supplied installed and now we will have to maintain them For three years, five years, so that order book is around two hundred crores, and uh, so this is the breakup of our order book. Okay, and uh, how do you account for it in your books from a uh, P&L standpoint? Will such contracts have a negative impact on your working capital cycle? So projects like the project what we are taking for AMISP in Bihar. There, uh, yes, uh, accounting will be done in a uh, way where we have, uh, it's a let's say, thousand crore project where thirty two and half percent is paid upfront by the board, and ten percent is advance, and two two and half percent is on the supply, and then the remaining in the equal uh, monthly installments for seven and a half years. So according the way we will receive the payment, the uh, billing uh, will be done accordingly to the customer. okay uh with state discoms always facing you know crash crunch as a system integrator how do we secure our monthly payments for next 6 to 8 years so uh, all these uh, emi sp uh, if you see the standard billing document from ministry of power government of india they have clearly given a security mechanism where the money which ever is uh, generated from this prepaid meters is initially first It is debited to the account of the AMS SP provider. So this is 100% secured money, and definitely more secure than the clean credit we are giving to state electricity boards currently. So there we don't see any challenge at all. Okay, and lastly, uh, how does the company plan to secure itself from risks arising from state government policy intervention? If it plans to play a long-term play, uh, you know, long-term role of being a system integrator. So how can you repeat uh, the state government? I okay. uh, uh, I'm trying to understand that uh, you know uh, how does how do we plan to you know secure ourselves from the risk uh, arising out of uh, the state government policy intervention? Uh, if we plan to play a long term role of being the system integrator, I got your point. So once we have become a system integrator and we have installed. Let's say, let's take the example of Bihar. So we have installed one million meters, so the complete metering billing is being taken care by us. So state government is equally liable to work with us very closely because their one million consumers are being handled by us directly, and they cannot uh, put anybody else to take care of those consumers because all the meters in complete communication is done by us. So they are equally, uh, even if any kind of policy changes. The thing can be changed on the smart meters when it is installed. And these meters are, key, uh, and there is a created uh, security mechanism where all these meters are being charged or recharged under our uh, uh, under our uh, software system, where the first money of uh, AMISP is paid to the AMISP. So let's say we are getting seventy rupees per meter per month for ten lakh meters. So the seven crore piece which has to come from SCB every month. So all the recharges till the seven crore rupees is done, it will come to Jesus. After then only whatever the amount comes, if it is seventy or seven hundred, and it goes to the electricity board. It's a very very safe mechanism of uh, securing money. It is much more secure than the current supply business what we do with TVs. Okay, that was very helpful. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, kindly press star 1. The next question is from the line of Anshuman Ashit from ICICI Securities. Kindly proceed. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. A few questions. Uh, so, firstly, sir, there was a, a negative other income book during the quarter. Could you please explain uh, what was it exactly? So basically, that's a, that's a that's a notional uh, valuation. The company has a treasury of almost 200 crores invested in AAA rated bonds and all. So it's it's, uh, it's the valuation of the bonds uh, uh, that is showing the other income minus. Oh, okay. So uh, so at the end of the period, the bonds were uh, revalued and. Uh, the difference yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. so basically just okay okay and sir uh, uh, the employee cost was also a bit higher during the quarter so is it because uh, we've started mobilizing uh, our resources for the bihar uh, project or uh, is yes. there some other okay okay yes so that is we already started building the infrastructure for the smart meters things and all so that has increased so a lot of work is happening on the development of value added products so since the top line has not been much, that's why we can see the clear that impact of uh, employee cost. So you will see on all these ex investments, what we are doing currently is an average great feature ahead of. Okay. So uh, on the Bihar project itself, so what is the current status? At which stage are we currently? Have we received any advance uh, from? Yeah, yeah, we have got uh, the first point of advance of 15 crore rupees. Okay, and the project is on schedule, so we'll start the implementation from September onwards. Yes, project is very much on schedule. The government is also very aggressive on it. Yesterday only we had a review meeting. So everything is on the line. Okay, okay. Uh, and so just uh, wanted to confirm once the order book composition that you had just mentioned. So you had said that uh, 500 crore is for electronic energy meters, uh, the hardware which we are providing. Uh, 150 crore is for turnkey projects, uh, FMS is 200 crore and uh, around 800 crore for the Bihar project. Uh, is there something that I've missed beyond this? So there's the order book of gas meters also. We do gas meters which is around uh, 20 crore, not big. And then we do also uh, MSB project accessories uh, are also a lot of projects you supply box things and accessories that is also worth hinting. And uh, do we have any export orders also currently on the book? So currently, when I say this you know, supply order for 486, there are some export orders also included. Hello? Hello? Yeah, okay, okay sir. So there are some export orders in the order book. Yeah, I... there are some very good export orders. And we uh, expect to get our export back to normal. See, the way what we were doing three years back, we were almost three figures in exports. So we are yes. pretty confident that by the end of this year, we should be back to our, at least those levels what we had in three years back in our export market. Okay, so it, it can be around 10% of the revenue uh, of, for the full year. financial year, we expect it to be. Okay. And so finally, on the... the okay. So finally, on the margin guidance for the whole year, uh, if you could uh, uh, inform us what it, it will be, because uh, there is a revision in the revenue guidance. So is there any revision so in the margin guidance? No, there will be, because first, uh, as I said, H1 is going to be uh, tough. Uh, we also didn't expect it to be uh, so tough. So uh, the margin guidance also uh, will be expected to be taking to forget. Okay. Thank you, sir, and all the best. So we will be on the normalcy from third to third quarter and fourth quarter. But the total the full year's margin will be around 13 quarter. Okay, sir. Understood. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question, kindly press star 1. The next question is from the line of Anurag Patel from Roha Asset Managers. Kindly proceed. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, are we planning to bid for further uh, uh, system integrator orders of the scale of BR, which we are 
already got so we have a very clear cut guidelines uh, in company that uh, up to a certain extent only we will go as a ami sp on our own balance sheet we will also uh, work with the investors for and create some uh, model for them so basically we can say like that that we will be not taking too much of amsp always uh, on our balance sheet uh, so basically we have taken this order now we will be participating more in supply supply of the meters and then uh, if our balance sheet whatever we will do we will do on the basis of our balance sheet and we are planning to make some, some spvs of these projects and bring in project specific investors also so whatever we are doing in the amsp Uh, in the start of the tender, bidding process also, and after bidding also. Okay, sir. Okay. That's it from my side. Thank you. But that will be project specific only. Okay, sir. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you. To ask a question, kindly press star one. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Jain from Galaxy International. Kindly proceed. Yeah, um, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, so I just wanted to check whether, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the ordering uh, and uh, the tendering process uh, that is currently happening, is it uh, as per the uh, earlier plans uh, uh, that we had, or is it going slow? Because uh, in quarter one. at the start of quarter one also our order book was around 1800 crore and after doing the 200 crores our order book is still 1800 crore so in this last three months odd we have got only 200 odd crores uh, new orders right so is it like because the tendering is going slow or uh, or uh, there is some change in the market share or something tendering is going slow because uh, the the project which was supposed to be finalized and the dpr what the government has given the guidance earlier that all the dpr should be frozen frozen by 30th october last calendar year and by 31st december all the tender should be out but because there was a uh, some uh, gaps between the state government and the central government and there was a supply shortage also so the government has come out with a uh, clear that guidance guidelines that All the new tenders have to come after the amendment process to be done by RIC. So because of this amendment process, all the tenders got delayed by six months. So now there will be a lot of tenders in the pipeline, and you will see a lot of decisions happening in next six months. So there is a lot of pressure from the central government, and now even Prime Minister has also uh, spoken about it very openly and uh, and. Unless there is a very strong homework being done by the power ministry, PM will not make any statement. Right, right. Thank you. And uh, just uh, uh, one more question. So uh, our current market share, or let's say over the last uh, couple of years, our market share has been roughly around 25-27 percent on the smart meter side. We expect to maintain that uh, number uh, even with the increased tendering requirement, given the capacity that we have built, right? in the current scenario yeah we surely expect to maintain this market share okay so that's all for my side thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of harshit gole from flare capital kindly proceed hello am i audible sir yes sir you are audible yeah please yeah yeah my first question how much is our oh sorry uh, how much of the revenue uh, is the ratio between the project base and the product base sir so our prime revenue is uh, product base only uh, so what are the projects that we can help us sir in the last quarter you want to know no 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 in the, the times to come where do we want this ratio to be so what do you mean by projects like just give me like we are doing a we are doing a turnkey project of smart meters in jharkhand 
No, no, no. I mean uh, the order book versus our day-to-day -day revenue business, like that. Revenue from our order book. No, what I am trying to ask is, yeah. are we showing only our order book in our revenue? Uh, the revenue is not only of order book, right? It is includes also the day-to-day -day business activities like selling of other products. Or is it we only meet the order book in our revenue? Order book and revenue, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I cannot get your question. Okay, okay. I have to turn to my next question. What is I'm our sorry, hedging sorry. policy? Do we hedge as soon as we get the order? Because the majority of our uh, orders are fixed price. The majority of our orders are fixed price. We have a, we have a very standard hedging policy. For a very, uh, some percentage of our components, we do the hedging. And, uh, not Hello. Okay. Okay, yes, sir. We have order book of approximately 1900 crores. What is the execution duration of this order book, sir? So as I said earlier, I have given the breakup of, uh, of the order book. So we will see uh, that execution will be uh, too fast. Yeah, there is an uh, order like uh, MIS order has to be executed for the next seven years. Yeah, FMS order that has to be executed over the uh, next uh, five to six years. And then there are supply orders which also be executed within this financial year. So okay. it will have the breakup of all three. Yes, yes. As a, and my last question, sir. As a system integration, uh, we get better payments. And that is uh, only 800 out of our total uh, 1900 crore order book, sir. So going down, where do where do we want this to be? The share of our system integration revenue? So, we have to understand one thing. Like we call ourselves system integrator. We are doing end to end. And when we do end to end project, system integrator can do it in on the OPEX basis and CAPEX basis both. So, if it is on the OPEX basis, I have explained earlier also, we will get something upfront, and, uh, something on our month basis. When it is on the CapEx basis, then it is on the milestone. If you supply the meter, you get some money. You install the meter, you get some money. You, you establish the communication center, you get some money. So it depends on the payment terms of the particular product. So if you see, Venus will be. Uh, I have a very clear cut uh, internal guidelines okay, how much we want to work as a system integrator where it is on the OPEX basis, how much we want to work as a system integrator where it is on the CapEx basis, and how much we will be only as a supplier to system integrators or to the state electricity groups. So dealers will be playing a role in all the three businesses. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, sir. These are my questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, kindly press star 1. The next question is from the line of Anjana Shah from Shah Investment. Kindly proceed. Thank you very much for this opportunity, sir. So a couple of questions from my end. Uh, first being, so if you could tell us, when can we expect the availability of these semiconductors to normalize? It will normalize in the next three to six months to a very large extent. Okay, okay, sure, sir. So, second question is this that you know, uh, we have the capacity to produce around say 10 million conventional meters. Can we replicate the same capacity for manufacturing smart meters or will we have to decrease our capacity? No, no, almost uh, similar capacity guidance we have given earlier also. The dealers can comfortably produce 9 to 10 million meters, smart and conventional products. Sure, and so how much capital will be required to double our capacity from current level? Is it possible to double okay. our capacity in a year? Very, very minimal. And within the next uh, three to six months, we can enhance our capacity to almost double. So the way we have, we have planned our manufacturing and the way we have vertically integrated our plants, we are doubling our capacity will not require much of capex and neither much of time. Sure, sir. That was really helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of Nikhil Jain from Galaxy International. Kindly proceed. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, so I just wanted to know whether all the legacy orders, which were low margin orders because of the commodity price increase, have they kind of finished or or they are still pending? And if pending, then how much are they? Some are still yeah. pending. Okay, so by when do we expect them to be finished, sir? Slowly and gradually in next two to three months. Uh, in this quarter, so would they be finished? The quarter two? More or less. Okay. So they may stretch a little more than quarter two also, right? That's right. Very minimal. Won't be of major interest. Okay. Okay. And uh, all the new tenders that we are kind of quoting in, so we are taking into account uh, all the commodity price increase and they, they will come with the right margins uh, that, uh, that the company aspires to, right? Of course. Okay. Right. And so the last question, actually, is there anything that can actually happen in the environment which can uh, delay this entire process of, uh, of uh, let's say, the orders and uh, let's say the entire implementation and all for the for this thing, uh, for the for the projects uh, that the states are uh, doing? Is there anything that what's the risk basically that uh, that we have besides the semiconductor one? So and uh, and the timeline shifting. So what is the risk uh, that we might have in this year um, that uh, the project moves to the next year or something like that. So, uh, as such, on the grounds, we are unable to envisage any major risk. Yeah, it's something externally, the way, uh, like, if the China US war happens, something happens grossly wrong to the world, then everything will be impacted. So, I don't yeah. think so, we'll be, uh, we won't be impacted. Okay. Fair enough. And uh, so just one last question. So when we do this uh, uh, CapEx plus uh, the TOTEX model, basically, so for a 800 odd crore project, the equipment supply and uh, the system integration work was something like 60%. Is that uh, uh, that's my understanding correct or, uh, or uh, is almost, it uh, the number? Uh, 45 to 50%. 45 to 50% is the equipment supply and rest is the uh, System integration and other work, right? And the facility management services and all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, kindly press star one. The next question is from the line of Aditi Javar from ADM Advisors. Kindly proceed. Yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I have a couple of questions. Uh, first is, uh, sir, what is the capacity utilization in FY uh, in Q1 FY23? Uh, second is, how so much capacity, revenue growth? Capacity utilization is uh, almost, I would say, uh, 50, 50, 50. Okay, okay. And sir, so how much revenue growth uh, do we anticipate over the next three to four years from current levels? In the next three to four years, whatever the government of India is planning and legacy and happening on the ground, which we are pretty confident of happening on the ground, then I am expecting uh, from the current levels of the, whatever the peak levels dealers have seen, three, two to three times growth comfortably, only in the supply revenues. Okay, okay. And so with smart meters replacing conventional meters, so uh, what what is your guidance on operating margin front like in uh, upcoming years? Operating margins will be uh, little better than the smart meters because of the high value. Yet. Okay, okay. And so just last two questions. Uh, how much would service fees contribute to our total revenue in the future and what would their margins be? So service will depend on the kind of projects we will do. It's very difficult to uh, give a guidance currently that what percentage of uh, service uh, revenue will be there every year for consumers. So it will depend on the kind of projects we do. So it will be good number, but I don't want to give any guidance right now. And a lot will unfold in the next 12 to 18 months what kind of projects we take and how much service revenue we try to build in that. Okay. okay. Currently, our service orders. SMS, but we have to execute excluding the Bihar order 
our order book is more than 200 crores only for the service bill. But that too, that will be executed in next four to five. Okay, understood. And so can you explain the competitive scenario like when it comes to smart metering industry in India? So like with multifold increase in industry size, are we likely, likely to see uh, entry of other Indian or international companies in this space? Currently, I'm not seeing a uh, lot of manufacturers getting into the foray. A lot of system integrators are getting into the foray. But I'm not seeing any, only the old manufacturers who are already there. I'm not seeing any new comers coming currently. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It was helpful and all the best for the upcoming quarters. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anusha from Srinath Securities. Kindly proceed. Mr. Anusha, can you hear us? Mr. Anusha, as there's no response, we'll go to the next question. Take this as the last question, please. All right, sir. The next question. Take this as the last question. Yes, we'll be taking the next one as the last question. Yeah. It's from the line of Melan Shah from Urmil Research Consultancy. Kindly proceed. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, sir, I want to understand our uh, smart meter is it tamper proof or it is preferred by anyone can be? Well, it is a tamper proof meter. When all the electronic meters applied in India are tamper proof meter. Because in our village, some uh, layman is doing preferred with remote control in Gujarat State Electricity Board of smart meters. So I ask this question. I, I understand what you are uh, what you are saying. So it's a continuous uh, fight, I would say. It is like uh, we are we are fighting with these kind of people, but that is very minimal. Electronic meters are like very strong tamper meters and not easy to be done. It's a Herculean task to tamper it. Uh -huh. So I asked regarding so because uh, we are going to get more and more order. And if this kind of layman can refer it, then what is the benefit of government? And no, it's not a matter of layman or non-layman. You have to understand one thing. If you have got to know if somebody is tampering the meter, that means the meter has told the government that it has been tampered. So we make meters which are temper evident. If somebody has put the computer device on a meter and tried to temper it, Immediately, whenever the meter reader will go and check the meter, they will get to know. And in the case of smart meter, automatically, if anybody will fiddle with the meter, will come automatically, it will be known to the electricity board. So, smart meter is a need of the hour for the nation like India. Oh, that's good. And, sir, what is the debt uh, currently company on? Right now, company is a net debt from company. Okay, so, uh, and uh, uh, considering our company in 25% tax lab or we are already in old tax design? No, we are in good Hello? We are in 25% tax lab. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. And basis is for excellent feature, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thanks, thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you will understand that the result this time was very disheartening. But the company that shows you that this is real for a short time, and the coming times, company will be doing a great thing. A lot of business we are seeing in the coming times, and we won't disappoint you for sure. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of GNS Power Infrastructures Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.